podcast. Hey, man. Oh, it's me. I mean, let's be honest. I don't know. You're the you're the biology specialist. Lift weights and drink coffee. It's time for another episode of <laughs> Untamed. Untamed. Well, hello, people. What's going on? Uh, welcome back to another um, solo episode here. Um, guess I want to start off by letting you guys know that <clears throat> here in the next few weeks I'll be in California, Stanford, California, Palo Alto, California, Northern Cal. Um, I'm going to be at Stanford for three months, so that's going to be exciting. It's going to be an adventure. I'm going to be all on my own. So what I plan on doing is a weekly podcast, log, blog, whatever, just to kind of update my experience there. Um, I'll be working with the sports performance program, strength conditioning program over there. So it's going to be really exciting, really, really cool opportunity. Um, so I'm going to try my best to do, there'll be shorter episodes when I'm there, um, doing this weekly thing, but I'm really stoked for it. So I look forward to kind of sharing my experience with you all. So that'll be cool. I don't, I mean, I'll try and see if I can film it as well. That's might be a stretch, but I'll give it a go. Um, so that's, what's going to be going on here in the next few weeks. So with that being said, I'm going to try and squeeze in as many episodes as I can until then. Um, never had Chris on. He was up till one thirty in the morning looking at film. And I know he's got a game this week and I'm out of town, um, this weekend on a road trip. So I'm trying to get him on. Um, cause I know he has some thoughts on the whole, uh, start one bench, one cut one, um, fiasco that's been going on. It's actually been, um, kind of a, a fun deal that, you know, we've been kind of going back and forth with, uh, Trey. So I'm going to get Chris on Chris. If you're listening, dude, we're going to get you on bummed out, but me and Jeff kind of were winging in a little bit, but it ended up, ended up being a cool episode because it was the first one we actually got on film successfully. I've tr- probably tried to film three, f- more like four or five and have failed, but I think I figured out what to do now. Um, trial Trial and error. That's the name of the game for me for this whole thing. So, Chris, we're going to get you on, dude. I'm excited. And to piggyback on what I was just saying, I'm finally getting filmed episodes up. The last episode with Jeff, episode 15, um, we filmed it, and we were successful. And it's on YouTube, as well as Apple Podcasts, as well as the website. So there's three ways that you can listen to it. Um, there's two with two, uh, two avenues where you can just listen to audio. And if you're at home and you decide you actually want to see what it looks like when we're, you know, doing this episode, the filmed version is on YouTube. So that's pretty cool. So I'll have this one filmed as well. And I'll get that up on YouTube later today or by tomorrow. And then, like I said, I mean, I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and squeeze in as many episodes as I can, um, before I leave for California. Um, so what I wanted to do with this episode was just kind of, you know, do an announcement that, you know, I'm going to be on the West coast. So the episodes will be a little different. They're not going to be their typical, you know, two hours, hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours. It's going to be shorter, probably more like 20, 30 minutes. Um, kind of like this episode, like most solo episodes that I do, they're going to be a little bit, a little bit shorter. Um, but to the point, and, you know, another thing I wanted to kind of talk about was, you know, I kind of, I want to hear from, you know, you guys that do listen to the podcast on, you know, what you think, you know, where we're at so far, uh, who has been your favorite guest. I've gotten a lot of good feedback on episode 11 with Sam and Jordan. Um, it was a fun episode to do just cause you know, it's just three buddies talking shit, you know, having a few drinks and just kind of seeing where it goes. And that's, kind of the epitome of what I wanted to do with this podcast, you know, along with keeping it, um, you know, informative and scientific and doing the strength conditioning stuff. But I want to have fun with it as well and not just pigeonhole myself to only doing strength conditioning stuff because, I mean, I love having guys on, you know, like Jeff and Big Smooth. 
uh, Jordan and Sam. Um, and I, but I really love having on guys like Matt Hinckley, Tony Gentlecore. I'm trying hard to see if I can do, uh, get an episode in with, um, Dr. Lane Norton. That would be sweet. And then if there's any other fitness professionals out there that you guys want me to reach out to, um, let me know. Cause I definitely want to hit them up and pick their brain and, and just have a conversation with them and, you know, see if there's any other information that I can share with you guys through them. Cause that's the whole name of the game here is when it comes to fitness, you know, every, you know, everything's kind of available. I know people are against CrossFit or, um, you know, machine only exercises, but the thing is every single exercise in existence has a time and place the only time that I would say an exercise is not a good exercise is when it's coached incorrectly or it's implemented incorrectly and, you know, it doesn't make sense for the individual. So I want to hear from you guys and, you know, kind of pick your brains a little bit and see, you know, if you're enjoying the podcast, things that you would suggest that would make the podcast more interesting or just, you know, suggestions on just improving it overall. I've, I'm starting to get better sound quality. I'm figuring out the mixer. I'm getting it filmed. But I definitely want to hear from you guys. And um, I think that'd be great. And if you have people that you would want me to try and get on, I'd be more than happy to reach out to those people and, and do my best. Because, I mean, I'm here to, um, I mean, yeah, it's my show. But, I mean, I don't just put it out there for myself. I put it out there for everyone else that to listen to. I mean, anybody can listen to this. It's a free, it's free. You know, it doesn't cost you a dime or even a penny to listen to. It's free, free content, but I want to be able to put out the best content um, for you guys. So, you know, drop a line, let me know. Um, What I wanted to talk about today um, was a little bit of carbs. And I just keep seeing so many things online and hear from people, you know, about carbohydrates. And what really sparked this, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend, Maddie, the pharmacist. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, I do a lot of fun stuff with Maddie. I, you know, I put our conversations on there. Um, but I was having a conversation with her about this, and, you know, she kind of brought up the point that, you know, my this is a conversation my dad and I have literally every time I see him. Um, he's like a super anti-carb guy, and she wanted me to kind of talk about, you know, the misconception of carbs and how – Cutting carbs, you know, equals weight loss, but there's, that's a flawed logic. The car, Cutting carbs equal equaling weight loss is a flawed logic. If you're cutting carbs, I've said this a million times, I know. If you cut carbs, you're cutting calories. Um, and when you cut calories and you're in a calorie deficit, you know, you're going to lose weight and you're going to lose fat. So the logic shouldn't just be cutting carbs equals weight loss for some people that may be, um, more sustainable, but that's not going to be sustainable for everybody. And I mean, I have a few studies on here that I got from, um, Dr. Lane Norton's, um, contest prep guide, which these are not all the studies that, you know, that he's done. These are, he's pulling other studies that other people have done. So I'll definitely reference those. Um, but you know, she's right. There's definitely a misconception of carbs. Um, you know, there's complex carbs versus simple carbs. Um, so there's obviously advantages and disadvantages to that. And, you know, I, I understand the, the, um, the concept of why people would want to cut carbs out. Um, carbs typically aren't, you know, high, um, when it comes to satiety, meaning, you know, when you eat carbs, you don't usually feel super full on them. Um, if they have a high fiber content, you know, you definitely will feel full because fiber, um, is definitely is something that will increase um, satiety. Um, I'm not going to go over the exact science of that. I can definitely pull up Lane Norton's contest prep guide and reference that. So, you know, that way you're hearing it from a, a scientist and not just a, a strength conditioning professional. Um, ah, coffee. That's an American flag cup too. So I'm uber American. All right, so one study that I really liked was it had to do with the ketogenic diet, and it was a study done by Johnston et al. And 
you know, the ketogenic low carb diets, um, it, it, they have no metabolic advantage over non ketogenic low carb diets. Um, so they compared weight loss and biomarker changes um, in adults adhering to a ketogenic um, low carb diet um, or a non ketogenic low carb diet. And, you know, what they found was, um, let me pull it up here. You know, what they found was when um, the, both diets were equally effective in reducing body weight and insulin resistance, but the ketogenic low-carb diet was associated with several adverse metabolic and emotional effects. Um, so what they, what they had concluded was the use of ketogenic diets for weight loss is not warranted. When overall calories are controlled and protein is controlled low carb versus low fat um you really don't see a difference and if there is a difference it's like a very small difference meaning i think it was actually low fat they saw a difference of like 26 grams of fat loss um in you know when compared to the low carb uh group so you know, I understand the ketogenic diet is something that's kind of becoming more popular. And if that helps you, if that's a sustainable diet for you and it helps you stay in a calorie deficit and you're losing weight, fantastic. You know, keep at it. Um, stick with it. It's, you know, don't, but don't come out here and tell everyone that the ketogenic diet is a superior diet when we have studies, you know, such as this one suggesting that it is not a superior diet. What is superior is, you know, controlling overall caloric intake and co controlling protein. Those seem to be two very important variables uh, when it comes to weight loss. Um, so another misconception about carbohydrates is that, you know, they're going to make you fat. Um, that's kind of misleading because the only way that carbs can make you fat is if they are a, if you eat them or consume them in excess and when we say in excess, that means when you're in a caloric sur surplus. You know, that's how you're going to gain fat from carbohydrates if you're eating them in excess. But that goes the same for eating fat in excess or any macronutrient. Um, because, you know, the name of the game is calories in, calories out. We have the most um, empirical evidence when it comes to, um, you know, calories in versus calories out. Um, that's the most consistent data. Um Another good study by um, Dipla et al. Um, was an isoenergetic high-protein moderate-fat diet does not compromise strength and fatigue during resistance exercise in women, um, which was another interesting one. Um, what's really great about you know keeping a high-protein diet, um, a high-protein diet does not mean 90% of your calories comes from protein. That's That would be an absurd amount of protein. Um, it kind of depends on your age along with, um, your gender, but usually when we're having a higher protein diet, it's going to help you retain lean body mass, you know, when you are in a calorie deficit and losing weight. Um, but that's not to say you're not going to lose lean body mass because when you lose weight, you are going to, um, lose some lean body mass. And when we say lean body mass, that does not just mean, um, muscle. Um, you have organ tissue as well that you will you will lose, um, but you know it's very important that protein. You know when you're losing weight, um, having a moderate amount of protein in your diet, so that way you are retaining um, muscle and overall lean body mass when you're in a deficit. Um, so that was a really interesting one too. Um, and here's a really cool article I found. It's on PrecisionNutrition.com. And it's by uh, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. And if you remember, I used to call him Dr. Stephen Nadolsky. Um, super sorry, doctor. Um, it's Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. He actually um, used to be a uh, proponent for low carb. And then he actually converted. And he believes that carbs are, you know, essential to a diet. Um, especially if you're you're training because I mean, your body uses muscle glycogen, which is carbohydrates. Um, it's the most efficient 
um, macronutrient for your body to use because it's stored directly into the fiber of the muscle. So it's right there to be used whenever you're exercising. Um, the thing about uh, the ketogenic diet is it's ketosis, so you're using ketones, so it's actually, you know, you're getting energy from, you know, a circulatory system as opposed to the energy being right there in the muscle fiber itself, not just the overall muscle, but the fiber, the muscle fiber. It's much more efficient to pull from um, and to use that as energy. Um, and, you know, by the way, I know we're like f- about 15 minutes into this. I am not a nutrition expert. Um, I would definitely delegate that to guys like Dr. Spencer Nadolsky um, and Dr. Lane Norton and other people who have a PhD in nutritional sciences. Um, those are the people that I refer to. I don't just get on Google and type in Google or carbs and, and diets. I actually go to their websites. I look at their articles. I read their articles. I bought Lane Norton's contest prep guide because it has so much nutritional information. If you haven't bought it, he just updated it. I highly recommend it. Even if you aren't um, looking to be a bodybuilder and do a contest prep, it still has valuable information on nutrition in there where you can actually, you know, design your own um, personal diet, you know, just based on the information that he gives. And I mean, he, he puts all these all these studies I showed you, the, the ketogenic one and the isoenergenic one. I pulled those studies from his contest prep guide and actually went and read them and wanted to share them on my podcast because they're super, super um, helpful and informative, and I think a lot of you guys could benefit from that. Um, but the name of the game, people, is calories in versus calories out. You don't have to count calories, but... I think from um, an accountability standpoint, counting calories is very beneficial. And I had a a conversation on on, uh, Twitter with my buddy Matt Hinckley about this where, you know, he was he was like, I don't and I, I agree with him. Like, I don't understand why people get so, you know, bent out of shape when you have fitness professionals and um you know, nutrition professionals and nutrition experts who are, you know, talking about tracking calories and, and knowing how many calories they have and how many macro macros they have and, and whatnot on a daily basis. Um, you know, from an accountability standpoint, knowing what's going, you know, the energy that's going into your body, as well as knowing your approximate daily output is going to give you a lot of feedback when you step on the scale and, notice you're gaining or losing weight. If you are tracking your calories and you jump on the scale and you're looking heavier, then by definition, you are not in a calorie deficit. You are in a calorie sur- surplus. So there's no way around it. Um, so from a, an accountability standpoint, it's fantastic. However, you don't have to count calories to to lose weight. You don't have to do it. Um, I think it's more beneficial, especially if you're trying to lose weight, to know. I mean, numbers don't lie. Um, Another thing too is when it comes to nutrition, it is not an exact science. It's an approximate science. We don't, we can't know the exact rate that our bodies are burning calories. We can own an approximation, you know, based on math. And I mean, there's so many different equations out there. And if you have read or are reading Dr. Lane Norton's book, he does even mention in there that you know, try different equations and, you know, do it a week or a week week or two at a time and, you know, record your weight every morning after you've used the bathroom before you eat or drink and just see how, um, you just track your, your weight and see if you are losing and if those calories, um, you know, the equation has given you, if, if that number works for you, if it doesn't, you know, try a new equation and, um, you know, kind of, switch up your macros a little bit. Um, and that's the fun part about it is, um, flexible dieting. You you know, what I love about it is that I can eat any food that I want to, and I don't have to, you know, have a list of what I have to eat every day. And I mean, you, you can do that 
But, I mean, why not eat the foods you want to eat and just know how much of that food you're eating and understand the calories um, that are coming from that food and how many macros you're getting from that food. I mean, it's not it's not that difficult. We're in, we live in 2018. We have so much technology now to where we can... We, there's so many apps out there with calories, uh, calorie tracking apps, like MyFitnessPal, that you can use. I mean, there's plenty of online coaches out there that you can actually, um, you know, track your calories through them and, and seek their advice. And I mean, they're there for a reason. Um, so use them, freaking use them people. It's super beneficial, especially if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to gain weight, um, whatever, whatever you're trying to do, just trying to tweak your diet a little bit, or even just getting advice on, you know, on nutrition and wanting, if you're wanting to learn more about it, I mean, there's so much information out there. It's just being able to weed through the bullshit that can be a little uh, a little difficult because there is a lot of nonsense out there and um you just got to tread lightly i guess but what also was exciting is um you know this is i'm taking a left turn here but um i just thought about it yeah um, college football starts this weekend and i'm super pumped for that i hope you guys are pumped for that too cuz we've been waiting so long for football to return and it's going to be a fun year. I think it's going to be an interesting year in the NFL because, you know, you're not allowed to tackle anybody anymore. We've seen these new tackling rules um, on quarterbacks kind of it kind of takes away the excitement of of sacks because now defensive linemen and, and, and linebackers are going to be very, very confused when they're coming at the quarterback and they don't know if they can hit him or not. I don't understand what's going on. Um so if someone can explain that to me, I'd love to bring you on the podcast. And we could talk more about it because I don't understand what the hell is going on right now. Um, we've seen so many textbook tackles this preseason that have been called targeting or um, like a roughing penalty, and I don't understand what's happening. It's it's football. It's a contact sport. There's big human beings that are running at each other at full speed. It's going to look vicious, but I mean, when you look at the replays. Most of these guys are textbook tackling and they're getting flagged for it. I don't understand what the hell is going on. So if someone has an answer for me, I'd love to hear it. I mean, I'd love to chalk it up to it's preseason and, and the refs are just as rusty as the players are. You know, I'd love to give them the benefit of the doubt, but when it happens over and over and over again in the preseason, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, uh, Passan, I think is how you say his name for the Chiefs. Um, he had a textbook sack where he didn't even, he hit the quarterback from the side, um, right in his um, torso, right in his abdomen. And he got called for a roughing the passer. Like, what the hell? It was textbook. Like, you're, it's ridiculous. I don't understand what the hell's going on. Um, but super excited. I don't know if I'll be able to cover. Um, I know I wanted to do um, an addition this year where I cover, you know, my Tigers and, kind of do a week by week breakdown of what I saw in the games. I don't think I'll be able to do that now that I'm going to be in Stanford. I'm going to be pretty busy. I'm helping out with their sports performance program, but I'm going to try and watch every game that I can. So I'm, I apologize for that. Um, but uh, definitely um, just to take another left turn here back to um, our nutrition talk, um, definitely go to precision nutrition.com slash low uh, hyphen carb hyphen convert um, super great article I'll even I'll uh, I'll post it um, in the uh, episode summary so you guys can go to that link and check it out really cool article by Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, um about you know him making a switch to no carbs to or being a proponent of no carbs to being a proponent for carbs carbs are a macronutrient and um See if I can pull up this. Uh, here we go. Um, so in Dr. Lane Norton's contest prep guide, you know he explains that carbohydrates aren't what you would necessarily call an essential macronutrient, meaning you don't need them to survive. Um, but they do help you. You know they do help you out when you are training. I mean, and they taste good. So do you not like things that taste good? And I mean, it's fuel. It's your body's main fuel source for, you know, when you exercise. Um, 
and they convert to gly- uh, glycogen, uh, which you know helps your helps your muscles look full too. So think about that. Um, we had a really I had a really interesting conversation with Tony Genocore about about carbs and um and, and I brought up the tweet that he had when he went to GNC and he was buying a an energy drink and the kid at GNC was trying to tell him that sugar decays the body. Just think about that for a second. Sugars, which is carbohydrate, which your body uses for for fuel. He said it decays your body. And then he proceeded to ask him if he knew about the ketogenic diet. And uh, Tony was like, I'm out. I'm out. See you later, man. Um, which was I thought it was hilarious because that's how bad it's gotten, you guys. We have people spewing poo from their mouth about stuff they don't know anything about, and it's ridiculous. Um, but that's all I really have for carbohydrates. Do not be scared of carbohydrates. They're not going to hurt you. Um, just make sure you're controlling your carb, your carb intake. Um, if you're resistance training, definitely eat carbs. You're going to, I mean, that's going to help your, your workouts a lot. Um, it's also going to help with, um, with recovery. I mean, carbohydrates are anabolic, so consider that. Um, but yeah, another thing that I wanted to kind of get into is a lot of these, um, I don't even know if I want to call them fitness professionals, but there's, I, I mean, I'm on Instagram and I follow a lot of accounts, um, like Cressy, Gentle Core, um, Somerset. I follow a lot of guys that, um, I, I think do a good job. Matt Hinckley, um, John Renzi, of course, Matt Hinckley and John Renzi, they go, to, they go, they go together. Um, my man, Richard Langford, um, those are the, those are the accounts that I follow, because I know that they're credentialed. Um, you know, I've seen the stuff that they do. I've seen how they coach. I know they, they know how to coach a deadlift. They know what they're talking about. There's just this crazy fad going on right now with, because of Instagram that anybody and anybody that's gone to any, any gym and has, you know, breathe the air in there believes that they're a fitness professional. I don't want to deter anybody, but if you want to post, you know, workouts and show your workouts, I mean, that's cool. Um, but if you're serious about the fitness industry, you know, don't be, don't be a pretender, like go actually learn and go get a certification and, you know, get some credentials and get some experience, you know, and use Instagram for good. Um, you know, sometimes Instagram creates this, toxic mentality of fitness where we all have to, you know, look shredded and have 4% body fat. We have to see striations. And I mean, if that's a legitimate goal of yours and you want to go and compete, you know, at a bodybuilding contest, then I mean, dude, go for it. But I mean, that's not the whole reason that you train. I mean, you train to move better. We want to improve movement patterns. So we, can become more joint friendly and we can, you know, have a better life. And that's the thing that really frustrates me is when I see people on Instagram that are posting these workout videos and trying to have people try their like six week or eight week, um, challenge or like weight loss challenge or something. And they're posting these workouts for people to do. And I, I, I try to look them up and they don't have any credentials next to their name. And it kind of freaks me out. Because, I mean, you don't really know what you're talking about then. I mean, just because it worked for you and you had a fitness professional tell you how to do that doesn't mean that you should be doing that. You know, if you have a certification and you know what you're talking about or you have some sort of education in that field, then do it. I, I mean, that would that's great. Um, I like that more and more people are getting interested in into exercise and um, it's, it's growing. Like, the industry's growing like crazy. I think it's awesome and I love seeing it, but I don't want pretenders to come into this industry and spread nonsense and get people hurt and then ruin the industry because of that and give it a bad name like that that bugs me because I mean I love I love this industry and it's a lot of fun um 
it's something that I look forward to every day of my life, you know, going into the gym and, you know, helping someone move better, working with kids and helping them, you know, develop motor, motor, motor skills and, and whatnot. I mean, it's fun. It's fun to see people, you know, hit a PR. It's fun to see people be able to do a movement they haven't, they've never been able to do before. It's fun to have someone come in and say they don't have any more uh, knee pain or lower back pain or someone that can do a, a pull up for the first time. They never could do a pull up before a, a good strict pull up, not a kipping bullshit pull up. Um, that stuff's fun. So, I mean, if you're seriously interested, you know, get credentialed, get educated and like contribute to this, contribute to this industry. Don't take away from it by being a pretender and trying to get likes on Instagram. I think it's, that's awful and it's toxic. Um, but that's just one thing that's been bugging me for a while. Um, I know I probably shouldn't pay attention to that stuff, but I mean, I just want to see this industry grow and grow and grow and, and just have all these huge names like Cressy, General Cord, Somerset, uh, Lee Boyce, um, Tony Villani, um, all these guys, you know, that are, have done really good stuff in this industry. Uh, Mike Boyle, how can I forget Mike Boyle? Um, you know, I love my name to be up there with them someday. Um, and I just really want to see this industry grow. So if you guys are serious, then, you know, if you have questions on, you know, what certifications that you should pursue, I mean, drop a line. I'd love to help you out. Um, you know, I had, I had a CPT, I have my CSCS, I have a biomechanics, uh, specialization. I'm looking to, to get a sports nutrition certification, um, in the near future. I thought about doing the functional, uh, movement systems. I thought about getting the USAW certification, there's a lot of certs that I want to get. I mean, I have, you know, I'm proud of the certifications I have now, but I want to keep adding to it um, just so I can expand my knowledge and then be able to, you know, regurgitate that knowledge and, and uh, help help as many people as I can and help this industry grow. So I'm super serious episode. I haven't done one of those in a while. So we'll see if we can lighten the mood a little bit. Um, I hope you guys are excited for the Royal season to end because I'm really excited for it to end. Um, I'm excited to find out who wins the bet between Jeff and big smooth. The line is 53. If they win more than 53 big smooth wins. If it's less than 53 Jeff wins. If it's 53, it's a push. So I hope one of them, well, one of them's, well, I hope one of them wins actually. I hope they don't land on 53. I think last we checked, they were, projected to win 53 games, which would be redonkulous. Um, here's one thing that really made me scratch my head this week. An article I read about a boy in North Carolina who got in trouble by his teacher for calling her ma'am. I'll repeat that. A young boy in North Carolina got in trouble by his teacher for calling her ma'am. And her reasoning was that she was annoyed by him calling her ma'am all the time. What the hell, man? What is going on? We're raising our these young men, these these boys, to be respectful to women, especially it, author, authoritarian figures that are women, to call you ma'am. And you're annoyed by it, and you punish him, and you make him feel bad about doing that? That is That is so toxic. That is so ridiculous. It was really, really you know, confusing when I read that the little boy went home to his mom because she had to sign a piece of paper because he was being punished, that he thought he had done something bad by calling a woman ma'am. Is that like, is that, is he becoming a misogynist because he's calling a woman ma'am? I don't understand it. That is, I that's, that's respectful by calling a woman ma'am, is it not? It'd be like if someone called me sir, and I got mad, and I got offended by it, and I got annoyed by it because you were calling me sir. It's called respect. Kids growing up learning respect, and we're punishing him for it? I don't get it. doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm seriously so still baffled by that. And I think his mom actually went in and talked to the principal and was like, yo, please, please put him in a new class. And I think the principal's like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. And that's what they did. And so I think she's taking it to the school board, which is awesome because if it 
you know, it's not, it may not happen to her kid again, but who's to say it's not going to happen to another kid for being respectful towards a woman who's an authority figure because she's a teacher. I mean, is this what's going on in schools now? Like, we can't call our teachers ma'am anymore. And I know it's like an isolated incident, but I mean, you know, we love to live in this outrage culture. Um, and I think that's something that is, you know, is okay to be outraged about, especially, you know, with all the feminism that's going on right now, which I mean, I, if you're a feminist, I get it. I totally get it. I don't believe in feminism. I believe in equal rights for women, but I mean, if you're a feminist, I totally get it. Um, I just think that if you're a feminist, I think you should be an actual feminist and not look for any reason to, you know, get mad and hate, you know, hate men because men are men, men are idiots. Um, not, not to excuse our behavior, you know, our wrong behavior, you know, by the way, but like that, I think if you're a feminist and you hear about that, I think that's something that you should be upset about because that makes feminism look bad with a capital B. Um, but I'm not going to get super political because it's not my area of expertise and I don't really feel like getting into a debate with anybody about politics because your opinions are your opinions and I respect your opinions even if I disagree with them. But, you know, whatever. I just think it's utter bullshit that a young, a young, a young man gets in trouble for being respectful towards a woman who is his teacher and he's punished for it and now he feels like he's done something wrong he feels like that because he was respectful towards his female teacher he's wrong for being respectful towards her that is you're screwing that kids up you're screwing that kid's head up and that is you know it's kind of disgusting to me so um but i mean that's really all i got it's not a super long episode i mean we may get to 40 minutes here i don't know but I, i'm not really concerned about that but man i just wanted to kind of talk about carbs i know i've done an episode on you know diet fads and whatnot, but I just kind of wanted to give a little, I know I didn't give a whole lot of information. I'm not a nutrition expert. I understand it from, you know, a basic standpoint and I read articles. Uh, I mean, I read research. I defer to the experts in the field and read what they have to say and look at the articles that they're reading. And I read the content they put out, but I want to be a resource to people. So that's why I wanted to uh, do an episode like this where I just kind of talk about carbohydrates um, as well as talking about, you know, what bugs me in the fitness industry right now. And then just, I know I was like, let's lighten the mood. And then I talked about this little boy who got in trouble for being respectful towards his teacher. Um, so it really was a pretty straightforward episode. I don't think I've had one like that before. Um, again, I'm going to try and squeeze in as many episodes as I can now until about September, um, September 14th or September 15th when I, when I leave for Cali, um, I'm back in December weekly episodes will be coming out. Um, that's going to be my, that's my goal. My promise to everybody is I'm going to try and get one episode out every week. It may not be a long episode, but I want to chronicle my journey at Stanford and share it with you guys. Um, again, give me your feedback. I want to know what you like about my podcast, what you, you know, any suggestions you might have, um, people you would want me to, um, have a conversation with. Um, if you have something to say and you want to be on the podcast, drop a line. Um, would love to have you on here. Um, but as far as what's coming next, man, I got, I got, um, Chris, Chris is getting in here, man. I'm I know I've said it like 20 times, but Chris, I'm getting you in here, dude. Um, I just got to know what, what's going on in your world and we'll do it. Um, so, so let me know, drop a line. Let me know if you guys want to hop on the podcast. Um, if you have something interesting you want to talk about, I mean, I had freaking Sam and Jordan on, we just shot the shit for two hours and drank whiskey. It was great. Um, but I look forward to, you know, hearing your guys' feedback. So I'll, uh, I'll get this uploaded here tonight and then, um, I'll get the video, uh, or the, the filmed episode on YouTube. So, um, thanks again, you guys, for all your support. I appreciate you guys tuning in whenever I uh, drop an episode. So um, I look forward to the next one. So take it easy.